Hello, hello, sunshine. It's mighty good to see you, bright sunshine. Hello, hello, sunshine. Oh, it's been dark for such a long time. It's been dark such a long time. And the sun is out. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house, my illustrious family, with me, your host, Khadija. All right, you guys, you know, I'm not going to be on here long. I just thought I'd throw some stats at y'all and let y'all know just how serious this mental illness thing really is. And just how sincere, I mean, and just how, um, how much work we really have to do. Excuse me, it's just that as soon as I start making, making my video, the phone decides to continue to ring. Anyway, let me go on. I wanted to share something with y'all. And this is uh, why ending the silence about mental illness is so important. It's so important. Y'all know I call this place the mental house because I realize um, being a part of show business, first of all, um, in churches and performing and in the entertainment uh, business, you know, you run into a lot of mania, a lot of narcissistic, uh, egotistical, or a lot of people who um, are chasing dreams and chasing things that are really an illusion. Um, and they begin to build up these personas, and these attitudes. Um, and a lot of them have chosen the arts because something has happened or driven them in their personal lives. And they begin to put all of that into their music or to their creativity or to whatever. And while on one hand, it's a beautiful thing, on, one, on the other hand, it's horrible because it stifles them from addressing mental illness, which is what it was in my case. I always tell people I was the first catfisher. I was Miss Catfish before it was a TV show. And it was only due to, now I can unapologetically say because of mental illness and not having the ability to have an outlet to explain things that were I was feeling inside. Um, sexuality issues, um, uh, uh, adolescent issues, um, self-esteem issues, all of those things um, manifested themselves in some type of behavior. Uh, and for me, the catfishing began when I got about 14 years old. Okay, so this is how um, my mental illness grew. Okay, but while I was catfishing on my in my personal life, in my other life, I was on stage singing, performing, and recording, okay? But there was a life that I had um, made up of myself or that was totally separate from that life, okay? And that was, um, for anybody that was on the receiving end of that, I'll get into that one day. Uh, but I, I'm telling you this because... Ending the silence of mental illness is very important. And for black folks, there's such a stigma around mental illness. I know I dealt with it from the people in church that think you can pray everything away. And that Jesus, 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 don't save you. Jesus, 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 going to save you. Jesus ain't going to say shit when it comes to your mental illness and um, the work that needs to be put in to get a grip on it. So what I found um, from my partners here at the at NAMI, y'all all know, which is the National Alliance Mentally for the Mentally Ill, um, there are some stats that I wanted to share with you, and this is very important because when we talk about our babies, this is how you know we got to start. So 13% of children ages 8 through 15 experience a mental health condition. And I'm going to read that again. 13% of children, 8 through 15, experience a mental health condition. And I contend in the black community, it's even higher because our children have to watch, witness and watch so much murder and violence. 
and um, uh, police brutality. Uh, so that number is got to be higher in my community. 50% of children ages 8 through 15 ex experiencing a mental health condition, experiencing a mental health condition, do not receive treatment. Let me say that again. Half of the children between the ages of 8 and 15 experiencing a mental health condition don't receive treatment. Okay? So you, you got to know that. So we pray it away. Again, that's what we do. 13 to 20% of children living in the U.S. That means one out of every five children experience a mental health condition in any given year. 17% of high school students seriously consider suicide. Um, I went to a funeral on last year um, with um, a friend of mine whose friend's son, a co-worker's son, had committed suicide at 13 years old because he was kind of chunky and the kids at school teased him. 14 years old and it hurt me to death and most beautiful little boy you ever want to see um, and I contend that the kids teased him because they were jealous of him but he didn't understand that and like I said because there is a silent killer of mental health circulating our minds then I mean and, and there was no help given because remember 50% of children experiencing a mental health condition don't get any help. Okay? So half of all lifetime classes of mental illness, cases of mental illness, I'm sorry, <coughs> of all, half of all of the lifetime cases of mental illness will begin by the age of 14. Despite effective treatments, there are long delays, sometimes decades, between the onset of symptoms and the treatment. Now, how many of you all, first of all, knew that? How many of y'all knew that 13 to 20 percent of children experience a mental health condition in any given year, and that 50 percent of the children between 8 and 15 experience mental health issues but don't receive treatment and that 17% of high school students seriously consider suicide this is an issue people we are for lack of a better word crazy as a loon and we need help and I'm going to step out and be the first one in line to say my, my arms are open my arms are open I'm here standing in the need of prayer knowing that I can be better Knowing that I need to be more, and it is things that have afflicted me mentally that um, I finally realized and I decided to open up about. And I'm just encouraging other people to do the same, especially those of us who have uh, or spent a considerable amount of our lives in the entertainment industry or in, in whatever capacity. Uh, just being is very important. It's not so much of what we do, it's who we be. And I think that it's time for us to get a grasp on who we be. Um, and I, I just think it's real important for us to talk about this. Let's end the silence. Let's end it on mental illness in the black community. Let's stop this because that's the only way we're going to be able to deal with all these other isms and schisms that they are putting on us. We got to get our minds right because once we do that, how can you not be insane living in an insane society? I don't care what the larger dominant group says because we know they're the master crazy. They're the master gaslighter, the master liar, the master murderers, uh, the master treasonous, the master just diabolical creatures. Right? That's who is dominating. I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about collectively. There's a group of people who are psychotic and we have been raised up under their psychosis. So how can we not be sick? We're probably sicker because it's not in our nature to do these things. Right? To some degree. 
All right. With that being said, with that being said, respect yourself, respect your culture, don't lose your culture, and educate your culture. And be one and unafraid and unapologetic to deal with your mental illness. Because I'm getting tired of hearing y'all talking about y'all hips and y'all backs and y'all necks and y'all asses and your stomach's hurting and your mind is hurting just as bad. You just ain't giving it no attention. All right. With that being said, adios, good people, and I'm going to see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye, people.